Okay, now we will see about the library. Okay, estate library. We will see about the estate library. So, the estate library helps us to reuse the estates. Um, for example, I'm, I have this open URL. So, okay, we will take open URL. So, I have been using this open URL test step in multiple test cases. So, if I add this, one way is I can copy and paste the uh, test step wherever I need that. Another way is to add that test step to library. And from test and from the library, we can access the test step. Uh, one advantage of using library is so if any changes that have been made regarding the test case uh, will be replicated when we make some changes from the library itself. We don't need to go to each and every test step and we have to make the changes when some changes have, be, have to be made. So that is one uh, advantage of using library. So for uh, per folder, we can have only one library. So I am creating one library. So sorry, I just missed it. I'll delete this library. And so in order to create the library, we have to right click on the folder. So we have to click on that. Uh, we have to click on that L folder. Okay, so this is the library folder. So to this folder, we can add the test tips that we are going to use in multiple test cases. So for example, if I'm adding this open URL to my library, So now I have added that open URL to my library. So you can see the test tape got converted into some reference. So this will be called as a test tape block reference. So this will be test tape reusable test tape block. So in short form, we will be call it as RTB. So reusable test tape block. All the uh, reusable test cases test step that are present in the library will be called as reusable test step block and this will be called as the reference folders will be called as reusable test step block reference rtb reference this is rtb and this is rtb reference so when you are adding any um like any test step to the library it will be converted the name will be affixed with underscore reference in order to um point out it as reference reference folder so if I, i'm using this i want to use this open url uh, rtb in constraint test case for example so that time what i can do is i can just drag and drop this open url to my constraint so the reference for rtb reference will be added to the test case or another way is using control tick so on the test case menu we will have search and add test step method so instead of dragging and dra dropping we can search for the specific test step for example open url and search it so this test step block rtb also will be coming up so we can select it from we can drag and drop or we can use this method search and add test step. And sometimes you may need to, okay, I'll show you with the example login, entering credentials. So I'm adding that to the library.
and assume you have uh, this entering credential in different test cases. So sometimes, um, so normally, uh, if you are changing value from any reference or RTB in library, the, uh, the changes will be reflected in all the places. For example, I'm removing this and uh, I'm deleting this uh, value for remember me. I'm just pressing delete button from keyboard. The value got deleted. So if you go and check in other reference, you can see that changes are getting reflected here. Even in the RTB in library, it will be reflected. So sometimes uh, you may need to give different value to uh, value to specific uh, test step. So for example, in this test step, I have uh, the same test steps in this test case and this test case. And I want to, maybe in this reference, I want to verify the forgot password. And in this RTP reference, I don't want to verify the forgot password. So if I'm deleting this, it will be reflected here. But I want to verify the forgot password here in this test case. So that time what we can do is we can resolve the reference. So just right click on the reference folder and click on resolve, resolve reference. So what will happen is it will be, uh, it will come to the normal test step. So the reference will be resolved. And if you are making some changes here, it will not affect any other RTB or RTB reference. So you can make the changes according to your requirement. Mm, so this is this is how we will be creating the libraries and we will be using the reusable test step block and we'll be resolving the reference if you want to use the different values. And in some places, uh, what we will need while using library, um, we want, we may need to use the test tape. We may need to use the entering credential test tape we, uh, in multiple test cases. Uh, we may need to, this test tape, but we may need to give the different inputs every time for email and passes. So just assume you have some project, um, you, have, you, you will be needing to um, log into that application with different users. Uh, with different users account, you want to log in for different uh, processes. So that time you may need to use the same uh, test tape, but the values, the input you want to give will be different. So that time what we can use is we can use business parameter in the RTBs. We can create the business parameter in RTBs in order to uh, give different values, but for the same uh, test step. So we'll see, we'll see that. Okay, I press control in that. So it, it became reference folder. So for this entry credential for this RTB, I want to create the business parameter because I want to reuse the test tape, but I want to give different user uh, email ID and password for every uh, test step. So I'm just, yeah, we want to use the same test step, but with different uh, inputs in every test step. So that is, so in order to create the business parameter, I right click on the uh, RTB. So in library, we have to do that. So right click on the RTB or you can see create object option. So that is business parameter option only. Or right click on that and the first option, create business parameter container. So this is business parameters container. So under that we can create the parameters we want to create. So, for example, um, for remember me for that password login, for this test step, the test step values, the input may be same, but only for email and password, we want to give the different values. So, we can create the parameters for these two controls for email and password. 
So I'm creating the parameter for email. So I click on the business parameter container and click on the create parameter. So I've created one parameter. We can rename it as email. And I'm creating one more parameter for password. So we have created the parameters now. We have to link the parameters to the respective tested value. So to do that, we have to delete the values. So there are two ways to link. One is directly drag and drop the parameter to the tested value. Or you can directly, okay, we have to change the data type to string here. So or you can use the function PL directly PL and okay, password. Okay. So you can use PL or you just drag and drop the parameter to the test. So now we may created the business parameter and we have linked that to the test right? So if you go to the reference folder, it will be visible like this. So only the email ID and pa password will be, those parameters will be visible. And whatever value you want to give, you can give. And password, you can give. And in each reference, we can give the different values. It will not affect any other reference or RGB. Other step, in, in credentials, we have step values, right? Like for that password verifying for we have this for that password clicking or logging so that will be same to all the references only email and password will be different so in this okay. page right you right click then you said uh, peer, sorry down the library of uh, entering credentials mm -hmm. right click mm -hmm. right click mm -hmm. yeah this is the entering credentials page page right yeah. Sorry, not right there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Here, you first create the par business parameters and then yeah. email ID and password. Then the lower mm -hmm. table, how did you create that PL uh, email ID? Like, how did you create that reference, like drag and drop or something you were saying? Yeah, drag and drop. Okay, okay, okay. okay. You got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you first create the parameters, then you drag and drop into the entering the credentials fields. Yes, yes. I just okay. drag and drop. I and mean, we can use the function PL. Okay. The password is input field, no? Action mode. Yeah, Okay, well, dragging and dropping is
Okay, when I drag and drop, this input action mode is coming. Otherwise, it's, it, it is empty. Okay, I'll run this. We'll see. <clears throat> okay, I'll run this one. I pressed the update. On the text check for the Press Control J. Yeah, you can see I have got the error. Could not find the HTML document entering credential with the following property title demo. Mm. So I check the demo and I stop this connection to grow. Maybe the intermittent issue I guess. I'll run it once again. We will get error, so the thing yeah. is, uh, we, uh, the input action mode is popping up only for email, right? For not for password. Mm. So I'm just verifying if it is giving that input properly or not. Thank 
not sure why I'm getting that. I'll try one. I change the title to demo web. And I have inserted a wild card, which means it will ignore the other text after this. Mm, okay, I'll run it on seven. Okay. So uh, I in the demo sorry. So for this I set the browser as edge right. So that's why I'm getting the I'll remove that token. Okay. Okay, and now we can move it again. Yeah, here in the configuration, test configuration, I remove it. In order to remove, right click on the parameter and click on reset to default value.
Okay, I guess that input is nothing like this input thing. So this input was is visible only to email ID, right? Not to the password. So it's nothing, it, 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 it's no problem. It's working fine, even if it is, that input is not showing up. So, um, so while I'm dragging and dropping, this input action mode is coming up. If I'm just enter, you, uh, calling this up using, using PL function, it's the input thing is not coming up for the parameter. So, that's not issue. Okay. okay. So this is the library. So this is how we will be using creating the libraries and we'll be using that and about the business parameters and all. And next we'll see about okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, next we'll see about recovery scenario and Clean up scenario. So first we'll see about recovery scenario. So recovery scenario means in some cases, um, maybe with, we will be getting the getting some intermittent issues randomly. Uh, maybe uh, on accessing any control um, by clicking on any uh, action button in your HTML uh, page, you sometimes you, you may get some pop up randomly. So this is one intermittent issue. Every time you will not get that. So sometimes you may get that pop up. Uh, sometimes um, you may get some random error, which is not the actual issue in the application, but some random error you may get while testing. So that time, uh, what we can do is, um, instead, so normally what we would do if we are getting some intermittent issue, we will just do manually, uh, if, if I'm getting some pop-up, random pop-up, what I would be doing, which is not in the test case, I'll be clicking on that pop-up. Manually, I would be doing that. So instead of that, in, uh, without our manual, uh, interview. Uh, how can we? How can we automate? Uh, in order to automate that step, we can use the recovery scenario. So, in the time of failure, test case failure, this recovery scenario will try to uh, will try to make the test case pass. So it will retry the uh, test case with different scenario. So in demo app shop, here I have one example, one scenario to show you. So if I'm logging in and without logging out, if I'm closing the browser and if I'm try again opening the URL, you can see. Uh, the page will come and uh, the application will be logged in already. Right. So when you try to log in, it will fail. Mm, it will fail. So this is one example. What we can do is for login, we can add this recovery scenario. Thank you. 
So this for this question, we have to create the recovery scenario. So in order to create the recovery scenario, right click on the test case. And if you click on this create option, you can see. Yeah, this three dot and the recovery scenario collection. So this is a recovery scenario collection folder. So under that we can create the, we can add the recovery scenario. So right click on the folder and you can see this option, create recovery scenario, the plus folder. Okay, I'll name it recovery scenario one. So for normally, in order to get, uh, in order to recover this scenario manually, what we would be doing, we would be clicking on this logo button, and so that this uh, this step will be uh, will be executing without any error. So that would be we will be doing manually while running the test case. URL will be opened and clicking on login link, this will be failed because the login will, link will not be there uh, because uh, as it is already logged in, the login uh, link will not be available. So that time we have to do something so that it will it will not fail. So the thing uh, what we will be doing, we will be clicking on logout so the test step, so the login uh, link will be available. So the test step, this will be executing without any error. So we can add the step as the recovery scenario. We can add as many uh, as uh, scenario we want to add for that. Maybe sometimes some scenario may work for that. Sometimes it may not work for that. Correct, so correct. Whatever it is, we want to add to the picture. Logout button. Um, yeah, yesterday I sent one link right in the same module, it will be there. Test case design file you imported in your product. Okay. Um, okay, we'll keep this. So we have added the recovery scenario, which is clicking on logout. And for recovery scenario, there are some there is something called retry level. So we have option test case our test step or test step value, which means if I'm setting the ratio level as test case, in the case of failure, any failure within this test case, it will execute this recovery scenario. And after executing recovery scenario, it will retry whole test case. It will execute from open URL to entry credential. All the things it will execute. If I'm setting the retry level as test step, and I'm getting error and I'm getting the failure in clicking on login link. I'm getting the error. So it will retry from this test step. It will ignore the previous test step. Uh, after executing recovery scenario, it will execute from the failed test step. And if I'm setting the retry level as test step value, it will re so for example, um, 
I'm getting the so as some value here in register, but in register as some value, and in logging and getting some error. So if I'm if I have set the retry level as tested value, it will after executing recovery scenario, it will run from the failed tested value. If it is passed, it will ignore that. It will it will execute from the failed tested value. If I set the recovery scenario retry level as tested value. So these are the different retry level you can set it set as per your requirement. And here we have one hierarchy. So for example, I have some other recovery scenario. Recovery scenario two. Um, maybe. I'm adding the recovery scenario, closing the browser. So I'm pressing Control T. So Control T will open the search and the add test. Tip. So you can use this option or you can use Control T. So I'm searching for those browser. Title maybe demo. Demo. I'm inserting wildcard. Okay. So uh, I have two uh, recovery scenarios under my recovery scenarios collection folder. Um, the hierarchy will be tested value, then test type and test test case. So um, I'm setting the retry level as test case. And for the recovery scenario two, I have the retry level as tested value. So the hierarchy will be tested value, test, uh, test step, and then test case. So in, in the case of any failure, it will execute the recovery scenario say two will be executed first and then if it is not working this recovery scenario is not working and i'm getting the error again that recovery scenario one will be executed so this is the error in the case of recovery scenario two failure the recovery scenario one will be executed mm. okay test case logout and test case Close browser. Okay, I'll add the open URL in recovery scenario. So what what's going to happen is this recovery scenario will be uh, executed and it will be it will fail. I'm just closing the browser and opening the URL again. So it will and it will retry the test step. So I have set the retry level as test step value. So it will execute from this test step, clicking on login link, and again it will get the error. So that time it, it has to execute the recovery scenario one, which is the retry level as test case. There is no logout in the recovery scenario two. Mm -hmm. And one more thing. We can use this recovery scenario feature only in the execution section, not in the scratch. Scratch book, scratch book okay, for okay. temporary purpose, right? So final execution only we can use this. Mm -hmm. This is the test. Yeah, that is the one. We are already added, right? So I'm going to execute this. So I'm closing this without logging. 
It's trying the recovery scenario to Okay, for now I will close which one okay I missed some testing that's why <clears throat> First time it tried, could not find the link logging. So after executing that recovery scenario, it again tried. So again it couldn't find, and then it executed. It clicked on the logout button, and it exited. So what I have to, I had to do it uh, after logout. I had to add the close at the close process step also. So we would not add. Okay. So as I missed this step, we got the two bro applications opened. So those colors got confused between two applications, two windows. Got it. So I click on it, I closed it manually. So uh, it, this, this is recovery scenario one. So recovery scenario two didn't work. So recovery scenario one happened and the test steps got executed. So we can have uh, many recovery scenario to the uh, to any scenario based on this. And this is recovery scenario. And we have one more thing called cleanup scenario under this. So now so the, the purpose of cleanup scenario is, so the cleanup scenario will get executed if none of the recovery scenario is working. So we have to create the cleanup scenario in such a way that it will make, make a way to uh, make for the next test case to execute without any obstacle so that is the purpose of cleanup scenario um, in order to create the cleanup scenario we have to right click on the recovery scenario collection and you can see this cleanup uh, icon create cleanup scenario and again we can have as many in a scenario we, we want to have. So I have just created the cleanup scenario. So I have created two cleanup scenarios. So here, it, it, uh, so recovery scenario's purpose is to retry the failed test case and we'll try to make it pass. But mm -hmm. cleanup scenario, purpose is it will try to set up the testing environment so that next test case will get executed 
without any obstacle. So that is the only purpose of clean antennas. So, for example, recovery scenario one is not working. Recovery scenario two is not uh, also not working. So that time, clean up scenario will get executed. Okay. For after logging in publication, this test case, I have adding blue jeans to cart. That's the test case I have. Okay, I'll, say, I'll explain that with another example. Okay, I'm trying to log in into the application. Okay. In 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 first test case, I'm trying to log in into the application, but I failed. Uh, the test mm -hmm. case got failed, and even the recovery scenario I, I created for that uh, log uh, lo logging into application test case, all of them got failed. The next test case the next test case after the test test where it will click on the email id so after login we will have some email id here right yeah that is the next step i want to click on that but as this this is not working as a as the first test case didn't work properly if I'm trying, if I'm trying to do the go to the next test case because of the first failed test case, the second test case also will affect. So in Correct. that time, we have to make make use some test steps. So mm -hmm. use some steps so that the test the next test case will work properly. Okay. okay. So that that is what the cleanup scenario will do. So we have to add the test test in order to set up the uh, application so that next test case will, will work without any problem. Um, so this is one example I can show you from this demo app shop. Mm. So maybe you can use it in your in, in any of the scenario that you would be facing in your project. Mm -hmm. So if none of the recovery scenario is not working, it is working. So that mm. time this cleanup scenario will be executed. Okay. So the cleanup scenario will have the test steps that will I help. Okay, you are asking like the same test step should be here in cleanup scenario, right? Maybe for this example, we will have, we have to have the same steps. Maybe for some different scenario, um, if, if I'm thinking of. Uh, mm, Okay, I'll just delete this cleanup recovery scenario one because it is working anyway. Uh, okay. I'll delete this and I'll keep this recovery scenario two in order to show that. Anyway, it will, okay. it will fail. So it, it has to execute the cleanup scenario. Mm -hmm. And I'll have only one cleanup scenario. Okay, this is the recovery scenario. But Closing the browser and opening the other. So clean up scenario. Okay, anyway, we have to log in. So the clean up scenario will be logging out again. Log out and okay. 
Okay. So logging up, clicking on login link, and entering credentials. I've added that as cleanup scenario. Okay, the next step, I'm adding, creating one next step, test step, uh, take test case, where we have to create, click on that email ID. So this is the control. Yeah, this is that email ID link. So we have to click on that. Credentials. Here, okay, I'll show you that. So I'm lo after logging in, this is the email ID. If you click on that, we can see the account details everything. Mm. Okay, I've added the two. Okay, I'll clear the previous execution. Okay, I'll execute this execution list now. I'm closing this browser without logging out. And then executing this.
Okay, it couldn't be recovered, so cleanup scenario got executed. So in the next test case, we got some error. More than one control found for action. So I have to rescan I guess. Okay, I'll do that. So we got the concept of using recovery scenario and cleanup scenario. Any questions? No. Okay, the next step, um, I'm getting some error. I have to rescan that. Okay, I'll rescan that, and after that, we can close the class for today. Okay. I guess almost 50% complete. Okay, I'll rescan and do this. In, I'll, I, I can show you even tomorrow.
actually based on the application here. Mm. Um, I'm trying to map this li. Okay, so as I'm trying to map that, it's showing all the li and visual items. So that's why. It's Actually, we have to map with this li, but there is no option here, so I have to scan newly. Mm -hmm.